guests, I'd like to introduce our morning panel. First, Mark Stewart is the CEO of the San Diego Foundation. <clears throat> Under his leadership during our last fiscal year, the San Diego Foundation granted more than 100 million to nonprofits that strengthen our community, the most in its recent history of charitable giving, and it surpassed 1.3 billion in assets, which by the way, since the San Diego Foundation has been around, it's also given away $1.3 billion to the region. Mark's vision for a community foundation can, can be a, that can be a change maker is at the core of the new Policy and Innovation Center. Next, Amy Liu is the Vice President and Director of the Brookings Metro Program. Amy has such an impressive resume that no introduction will do justice. In fact, we could use most of our day to day to discuss all of the things that Amy has done. She is a national expert on cities who translates research insights into action on the ground and, ex and excels at linking local experiences to federal policymaking. She co-founded the Brookings Metro Program and has been instrumental in its success and growth as it approaches its 25 year anniversary this year. Thank you, Amy, for joining us from Washington today. And last but not least, Nathan Fletcher, chair of the San Diego County Board of Supervisors, whose leadership and drive helped to create this new center. He encourages us to think about bold solutions and transformative approaches to persistent problems and has agreed, and we're thankful for this, that he chaired the center's government and agency advisory council. Thanks to each of you for making the Policy and Innovation Center and our partnership with the Brookings Institution a reality. And now the work begins. Mark, over to you. Thanks, Susan. On behalf of the San Diego Foundation, thanks for joining us today. This is a stellar group, and I'm so optimistic about the San Diego Regional Policy and Innovation Center and what its creation is going to mean for our region, our cities, our neighborhoods, and our families. I want to start with why the San Diego Foundation established the center and why do so now. In times of crisis, community foundations are uniquely positioned to put their philanthropic leadership and deep cross-sector relationships to work for all who are impacted. We assess need quickly, bring together funding partners, and nimbly grant out those dollars to critical nonprofit programs. The speed and size of the community foundation response to COVID-19 has been unlike any response to a crisis in our nation's history. We have worked with many of you over the last 18 months to raise and grant millions of dollars to nonprofit organizations to assist with basic needs such as food security, childcare, housing, utility assistance, um, uh, education, broadband access, employment, medical support, and so much more. We have learned so much as the pandemic has unfolded. COVID-19 revealed some of the greatest structural challenges, health risks, economic instability, and inequity of opportunity. We recognize that relief is short-term and a robust equitable recovery will require us to address major structural problems. The San Diego Regional Policy and Innovation Center is our response to these structural problems. We need integrated collaborative policy solutions to enable transformational systems change. As Susan described, the center's mission is fundamental to bridging the gap between relief and resiliency. Applied research can help local leaders identify catalytic policies, programs, and interventions, and attract greater capital to the region. What does this look like? Well, climate resilience, critical infrastructure like broadband access, homelessness and housing affordability, as well as health equity, are all regional challenges that require massive collective effort. We have to break down silos, and we have to build a more jurisdictional team for San Diego. And we have to succeed. Quite simply, our future depends upon it. All of us know that San Diegans are some of the most generous people in the world, and their donations to nonprofits make a difference to many San Diegans. But if philanthropy aids those in need, it is better policies that change the system to eradicate the need altogether. That's why I'm so pleased that this Brookings Institution is joining us here in the region in a new multi-year partnership. The Brookings Institution is the world's leading think tank 
sought out and respected by national and global leaders for its in-depth research that leads to new ideas for solving problems facing society. I could not be more excited for this new partnership. For the first time, our region will have a dedicated team of Brookings scholars who will focus on place-based policy right here in San Diego. The resources this valuable and vital partnership brings to our region are unprecedented. We will learn from the best on how to tackle some of the greatest challenges, attract new partners and federal funds to the region, and share what we learn with a national audience. There is so much good work underway in the region. We've got lots of pieces to the puzzle already in hand, but we need to think even bigger. This is where the Brookings Institution excels. With the vision and expertise from the Brookings team, my hope is that we can get a new view of the puzzle find new ways to fit our existing work together and fill in those missing pieces. Not since the 1930s has our nation seen this level of infrastructure funding available for place-based public investment. And our San Diego region must be able to attract and use those funds so well. The Policy and Innovation Center is here to help us come together to compete with the entire nation for these vital dollars and through Brookings, create a bridge to federal policymakers in Washington, DC. With that, I want to close by saying thank you to the Brookings Institution for bringing your talents and insights to San Diego. And thank you to our supporting partners, the County of San Diego, City of Chula Vista, and the San Diego Regional Economic Development Corporation. We also thank our contributing partners, as well as members of the Center's Government and Agency Advisory Council and our Board of Governors for their leadership and engagement. With that, I'd like to pass the microphone to Amy Liu. Amy, the floor is yours. Good morning. Um, it's wonderful to be with you. Thank you so much, Mark. Thank you, Susan. I was having a little bit of AV problems, AV problems, so I hope you can hear me okay. Can you nod? Wonderful. Um, it's really exciting for me to be here with you today to launch this center. I think many of you are familiar with us, uh, the Brookings Metro Program here um, and in DC. And even though we are based in the nation's capital, we do work with a lot of cities around the country. But I just have to say that the San Diego region holds a very special place in our heart. Uh, we've had a long-standing relationship with this community, thanks to our partnership with uh, Mark Cafferty, EDC, and many of the community partners that are represented here. And we are super excited to work with Shalini and the rest of you to take this collaboration to a new level of impact that you've heard already mentioned by Susan and Mark. And I want to reinforce that the timing could not be more propitious. You have a federal partner that's ready to invest in your future, and you now have Brookings Metro and our team ready to be even more strategic partners to you as you achieve your next round of uh, ambitions. Um, let me just say a few words about the federal moment. Um, I think as you've heard from others, and you'll hear soon from my colleague, Adi Tomer, um, we are all facing some unparalleled federal investments um, not only for San Diego, for, but for all local communities across the country. Billions of investments in, uh, in the form of infrastructure, housing, workforce, small business development, neighborhood revitalization, environmental um, resilience projects. And um, it's a huge opportunity for you to take this unprecedented moment and have them channeled in ways that really can rise to um, what you envision for Greater San Diego. And I have real confidence about this community stepping up. One of the things I really admire about the leaders in this room is that you always have been pushing the envelope around policy innovation and, um, and evolving the community to be even better. San Diego's transition from a predominantly military defense town to a high innovation community You've doubled down on your commitment to equity and inclusion and to make sure this innovation economy redounds to more people. You have a commitment to climate resilience as a result of this work. Now you have a federal opportunity to make good on those ambitions. And that's what we're looking forward to. And I will just say that Brookings Metro, as we um, think about our own um, vision for impact, is that we are really prepared to be even deeper collaborators with you. 
Um, we fundamentally believe that your region um, can be a paragon for inclusive prosperity and environmental resist, re resilience, and that uh, through this partnership, you can lead the way for other communities that are now trying to position themselves in this federal moment. And by doing so, I do believe, and this is part of Brookings Metro's vision too, is that with San Diego's leadership and perhaps dozens of other metros who can learn from your work, we can really lift up the prospects and the progress of the entire American future. And that's what's so exciting about our collaboration with all of you is the ability for us to uh, bring applied research to your communities, have them turn into real tangible solutions uh, in your community, and having your experiments and your lessons inform federal policy so that those federal reforms can really um, even further support what you're trying to get done. And so again, really looking forward to this next level of work together and for the conversation. And I'll turn it back to Susan. Um, thank you so much. I'm sorry, I had a little bit of a tech issue where I lost my sound for just a moment. And I will turn it over to Supervisor Fletcher. Thank you, uh, thank you, uh, thank you, Susan. Thank you, Mark. Um, you know, yesterday was kind of the launch where we kicked this off, and today's the day where where, where we get to work. And I, I just want to take a moment and really commend uh, Susan Gwen and and Mark Stewart with the foundation. You know, it was during COVID, um, right after I had really become a supervisor, we were tackling this thing, and time and again, we we called on the foundation for for really hard, difficult things, and every single time. Uh, we needed to meet the immediacy of the moment with the crisis we were facing the san diego foundation popped up uh, and this launch of 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 this center and what we're doing is a testament to a lot of work over a sustained period of time you know susan had an incredible idea uh, that as a region we could do this and partner with brookings mark brett came in and really san diego foundation you know brought the vision of what we were doing um, and then to reach out to such a a world-renowned institution uh, in Brookings and have them do a first of a kind uh, partnership with the region uh, in this way. And, and we're so thrilled to have Amy Liu, uh, you know, with us here today and everyone from Brookings Metro who have done work again on inclusive economy and, and all the work uh, with Mark Cafferty and team. Um, so a familiarity there um, to have Shalini, who we've been working with for, for quite some time on, on federal issues who bring so much experience to have uh, all of these folks kind of come together, I think is a, is a tremendous testament uh, to where we want to go as a region, and and really what I think everyone assembled on this uh, on this meeting with us today sees as as kind of the next decade of San Diego, um, a region that is moving in a in a more progressive direction, but a region that is willing to confront some of these very intractable, big, difficult issues that we face. And you know, San Diego is not dissimilar from other areas of the country who face challenges. Everyone is experiencing the same things with the severity of climate change, understanding the real implications of what's already happened, the dire need to take urgent action now while recognizing you're still going to have to mitigate the damage that's already been done. Uh, we're all wrestling with how we move into not only an inclusive economy, but a fair economy. You know, the, 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 the foundational belief that someone who works full time ought not live in poverty. And how do we ensure in a dynamic, competitive global environment, we're fulfilling our basic obligation uh, to workers. Uh, the need that we need to have to invest in infrastructure and not just physical infrastructure and as, as chair of MTS in San Diego, I love physical infrastructure, but the need to invest in human infrastructure as well. And I'm, I'm uh, heartened by the federal government. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens. Hope springs eternal uh, that, that as a country, we can not only invest in our physical infrastructure, uh, but we can also invest in our human infrastructure. And then the challenges around tackling issues of, of racial injustice, of, of, of economic justice, of environmental justice, all of those. And so what we have is, is an incredible uh, platform of folks who can help us as a region guide through those. But the fragmented nature of American governments means that we're not going to see substantive progress. There's no one individual entity alone that is going to say, hey, we came up with the idea and we're going to vote it through and then the whole region is going to benefit. It requires us to work together. And as I look at the folks who are here, 
we all work together on an almost daily basis. We work together in regional governing bodies. We work together in COVID response. We work together implementing community choice energy or trying to build the transit systems of the future or tackling any of the issues that we do. But what we now have is the ability to bring those relationships uh, between elected officials and agency heads and nonprofit leaders and community advocates in our region under the guise and, and under, the, under the, the advice and leadership and guidance of someone like the Brookings Institution to help us coalesce what we want and then go leverage that in particular with our federal partners um, to figure out how we can do it. And so I think the collaborative nature of what we have here, the expertise that's being brought in here, the relationships, the ability to drive and build a coalition is very important. But I think as, as a region, we, we cannot lose sight of the fact that in tackling these large, very challenging, vexing issues, uh, it, is, it is not inherently gonna be a process of consensus. And, 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 and I say that because so many of the challenges we face requires to do something different than the way we do them now. And anytime you up in or change the way we do it now, there's gonna be some folks who don't think that that's necessarily folks who benefit from the way it is. And so I think we have to challenge ourselves daily uh, to not be afraid to tackle uncomfortable things, to not be afraid to tackle how things need to fundamentally change and to not be so fearful that we have to only come up with ideas that nobody out there opposes. Because if you do that, you're gonna end up with status quo. And so when you're talking about these things of environmental justice, economic justice, racial justice, climate change, uh, it, is, it is challenging. And, and even the notion of physical investment uh, is not without its controversy. If you wanna experience that, go out and talk about why we should fund transit and, and look at what you tend to get back from certain segments. And so I think as a, as a, as a body, as a group, as stakeholders who care about this, we have to continue to push ourselves outside of our comfort zone uh, to be willing to talk about how do you structurally drive things in a new direction, understanding that, that you know, what we do is money, rights, land, influence. It is, it, is a, it is not a continuum, it is a pie. And so change can be hard at times and we cannot be dissuaded um, from confronting the, the hard and difficult things. At the launch yesterday, I said, we have a little whiteboard outside my office. Uh, it says, we only do hard things. Uh, you're never out of the fight and fortune favors the bold. And I think as we move forward, uh, we have to continue to challenge ourselves to try and confront these hard things, uh, to recognize even if we have setbacks along the way, we're never out of the fight. Um, and, and I think that there's an opportunity. You know, I, I look at the folks that are a part of this assembling today and, you know, from jurisdictions across San Diego, from really well-respected organizations, but we all share this same commitment to move our region in a better way. And I think we're all invested. Uh, at looking at that the next period of San Diego is one that can be one of tremendous promise uh, and tremendous achievement and tremendous accomplishment. Uh, but we are not naive to the reality of how hard that will be. Uh, and so having the Brookings Institution as a part of this, having the San Diego Foundation, uh, having uh, the regional EDC, uh, having so many folks here really uh, gives me great hope uh, that, that we can make tremendous progress. And so I'm so grateful uh, for everyone who's worked for a long time to get us to the point of the launch. Uh, I'm glad our county government stepped up to, to be a, a, a partner uh, in this effort and, and help do this. And I'm really looking forward to working with uh, not just the panelists who are here, but each one of you uh, who are here as participants, because it is going to take us all uh, really coming together to tackle some of these difficult things to move forward. So thank you so much for, uh, for having me join you. And I'm, I'm excited to chair the advisory group and, and really work hard uh, to uh, move our region forward. Thank you, Supervisor Fletcher, Amy and Mark. I hope everyone found our three speakers as inspiring as I did. We've got a few minutes for questions. So I'm gonna pull a few questions from, and I see many of you have been texting my private chat. Don't be shy. You can also put your questions in the main chat for everyone. If we don't get to them, we can also respond in writing, but I'll share a few that have come in. Amy, yesterday we heard from the Brookings president, John Allen, uh, speak about work with the city of Indianapolis to bring in federal dollars. Can you speak a little bit more about this and why we're such in a, in a unique moment right now? Sure. So, um, you know, we worked with Indianapolis and actually the state uh, and the state of, in, and then the governor about how they can rebuild themselves after the recession in ways that's going to be most both leaning into new innovation, new technologies, but also invest in the workers 
and the downtowns and neighborhoods that are really critical to the to their future. So what happened was, Susan, is we've had a longstanding relationship with the philanthropic, civic, and nonprofit community in the greater uh, Indianapolis area. We then took the inclusive economic growth strategies in Indianapolis. We convened multiple cities together in the state. Indiana is different from California in the sense that Indiana has uh, eight uh, older industrial communities that really are um, challenged in this post-recession or post-COVID moment to emerge in a much more innovative, inclusive way. And we worked with the governor on a set of in, uh, investments to invest in each of their major regional hubs. What happened was though that whole set of planning that we've done with the region and then with the governor's office immediately translated to how local and state leaders were then primed to use their federal investment dollars. So their CARES money and the ARP money now went to basically double their investments they were originally going to make in um, inclusive economic strategies in each part of the region. So Susan, I think this goes back to when you all come together, um, thinking in cross-cutting ways, integrated approaches as a community, as Supervisor Fletcher talked about, in that collaborative way, that homework you've done, that planning, that um, bringing constituencies together makes you investment ready. And I think that's the opportunity we have here in this region. Thank you, thank you. Um, Mark, yesterday you gave a great analogy about how we have lots of puzzle pieces in the region. Could you share that with us? Oh, when, when you think about it, it's so easy to sit down at a table with a puzzle where you dump it out on the table. You might have friends, family, children with you and you start putting the pieces together. One says, you know, let's work on the green pieces, the blue pieces, and you've got a great image on the top of the box by, uh, through which you get to do this work together. But just imagine if you don't have that finished puzzle um, image uh, to be able to work with. That's some of our struggle that we have in San Diego, and that's where we need to be able to do that work together. And by bringing Brookings together, by bringing all the municipalities and, and various government entities together, we can start to work collectively to say, let's imagine what that image is going to look like. And then let's start to put those puzzle pieces together accordingly. And so I think this is that this wonderful, great moment that we have through the center, through our collaboration and coordination, that we can start to say, what is this image of the San Diego region that we wish to see? And then how can we work collectively, independently, and, and in a coordinated fashion to put it together with, with um, entities using their best skills and expertise, the incredible research that we're going to be getting from Brookings to say, let's see how this gets all put together. But that's still that big piece for us to work on is the federal government investment, as well as from our state and national philanthropic leaders. I know that through this new partnership that we've announced uh, yesterday, that there will be national funders looking at the San Diego region with new eyes and saying, there must be something going on in San Diego and we should, we, and we should definitely be taking a look at this. So the nice thing is, I think we've now got all the seats around this uh, puzzle together and we can start to work collectively to say, what is this image? And let's work towards then completing the puzzle. Wonderful. Supervisor Fletcher, um, last question. You mentioned that your office only does the hard things and you talked about working together. I can see on this, uh, Zoom call that we have uh, Sarah Gossi and Nick Maccione, and we've all heard about the new data center at the county. Uh, what is your vision as to how those top folks at, at the county and this new data center, and of course, uh, across the county, we can work together to assist the other municipalities and, and see this vision through? Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you, Susan. I think, I mean, if, if uh, for non San Diegans, our, our county government has gone through a little bit of a change in the last two years. Um, and I think it's an exciting time uh, to, uh, to, to, to be at the county of San Diego, but, but we are 
rapidly moving in a, in a fundamentally different direction. And so when you take a $7 billion a year entity and point it in a new direction, uh, it could be uh, incredibly trying times with the senior leadership of the county. Uh, you know, Nick Mascione, our agency director, Health and Human Services, Sarah Agassi, uh, our luge director. Uh, so many folks here have really embraced where we're going. And so the investments we made, again, can help tackle things that are directly in the purview of what we're responsible for as a county. But we also want to serve as a resource, as an ally, uh, as an aide, as an assistant to, to regional convenings uh, to, to try and, 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 and get so many of the folks involved. Because it's not enough, you know, the county, we, you know, we need our partners uh, in cities. We need our partners in advocacy groups. We need our partners from the environmental community, from labor, from, from, from across the board agencies to, to come together. And, and I really think, Susan, that, that a lot of, of what we can do here you know, when you convene the experts and you look at the data and you look at the research, it will often point you in the steps that you need to take to confront a, a vaccine problem. Sometimes it's hard to kind of figure out what you should do. But a lot of times the hard part is once you kind of know what you should do, how do you build the coalition that can help you implement change? And so I really think what we have to do is marry that data component of, of our new office of, of, of data analytics uh, marry the research component, marry the, the tremendous kind of scholar academic uh, research component that Brookings and uh, institution and others bring, along with our collective will that when we say, hey, this is where we should go, then we all kind of roll up our sleeves and we get in the fight to actually implement that. Um, and, you know, I just want to reiterate what I said earlier, change is hard. Like there's a reason the status quo is the way it is. And there are folks who benefit from the way it is and folks who were vested in the way it is. And so, you know, any, any, any time, you know, I, I forget the exact quote, but there, there's a great line about, you know, progress is a nice word, but change is its motivator and change uh, has its obstacles. And that's where I think as a region, we really have to come together to spend the time collaboratively to work on these things. And then when we, when we pick a path and this is where we got to go, then we all have to plow together. So Susan, I really think it's that marrying of that data analytics research, best practices where we go. And then us having the courage to really come together as a community and say, hey, we're going to move. It's going to be challenging. It's going to be tough, but we're going to look back and feel like we did the right thing. Thank you, Supervisor Fletcher. And I want to acknowledge uh, Mayor Sanchez. We, uh, I see that you have your hand up. You've dropped something in the chat, but um, we're happy to open the floor for just a moment um, of, for you to speak directly. Oh, thank you, Susan. No, I just wanted to... Um, reiterate and, and say how exciting this is because this is truly historic. This is, there's, it's never gonna happen again where there is this amount of funds uh, available and, and to be able to talk to the county, um, talk to the county uh, completely about what is happening here in North, North County and perhaps even kind of demand a, a minimum level of economic development and the minimum level of addressing climate change. So those are my two that I put in there because these are the things that I think we're having the most difficulty. Um, Oceanside has the lowest jobs to resident ratio in the county, which of course means that we have the highest probably congestion out here. And, um, and, and we're still kind of behind the times. So it's really, really exciting to be part of this. Thank you. Thank you. Well, now I'm going to turn the mic over to Shalini uh, Vajala, our new executive director of the Policy and Innovation Center for the next part of the agenda. Shalini. Uh, 